Monster. They are growing in numbers and approaching the castle quickly. Do you wish to send the armada? Not yet. Release the serpent. Make their path difficult. Ah, oh, finally. There's the castle. I can see it from here. Oh, God help us. Take your positions! It's time for episode 5 of Lucifer's Sanctum, where we attempt to survive 300 rounds on every expert map. Last time we were on Quad, and today we're on probably the most hated map in the game, Ravine. This expert map was launched in February of 2021, and at the time of release this map could not even be beaten on chimps mode, because it was impossible to even get past round 7 because one red balloon would always leak no matter what you did. Which is why in the next update, Ninja Kiwi added this ward that would fly out of the stone and pop one balloon after you tap it 24 times, making it possible to beat the map. This map has four tracks, two of which are active at a time, starting with the two tracks to the right and then alternating each round. We also have quite limited space on this map, and a lot of objects blocking the sight of many towers like the bridges and the trees. Any water tower also has their sight completely blocked off because of how far below the track they are. This means that they can't attack at all, except for the top path tier 5 buccaneers airplanes and the middle path's ability. And also the submarine's middle path can also attack due to the missiles being fired up into the air. This means that we get some extra incentive to place towers like sun temples and other towers that ignore obstacles on the water. Sadly, the boat paragon does not ignore obstacles, so that's a lot of DPS gone. But we can still use its ability and of course the airplanes of the navar can still attack. Because of all the sight blockers, the ace paragon is going to be super important and thus we will start the game by letting the ace get most of the pops while we build our farms and also a boat farm. We're going to try our very best to get all paragons to as high of a degree as possible and give them the best possible placements. One of my viewers suggested that I would switch up the challenge a bit in between maps. For example, not allowing certain towers or only being able to place towers in certain areas of the map. And I think that's a good idea that I'm gonna take with me on future maps. In this case, I didn't change anything about the challenge, but in future runs, we'll have some different rules. Speaking of maps, as mentioned, this map I think is one of the most hated ones in the game. Not only because the map is difficult, but because it's annoying in a way. I think what makes a difficult map less liked than others may be the large amount of spread out sight blockers and also less clean map design. I think I will make a video creating a map tier list and discuss map creation and perhaps we'll make a poll on what you guys think as well. There hasn't been any videos in the past week because I've been quite busy with school. I had a project deadline by Sunday, and I thought it was going to be a quick thing that I could do in a day or something, but boy was I wrong. I ended up sitting and coding for 22 hours straight and handing in the project 2 hours before the deadline, like a true procrastinator. Anyway, I saw a few people asking when this video was going to come out, because previously I had made one of these videos every Saturday. But I decided to spread them out a bit more because I want to make other videos as well and also making them all at once would uh, tear a hole in my pocket since I'm a student and I don't make the artwork myself. So don't worry and think that I've forgotten about the series, I certainly have not. But uh, in times like these with banks going under you gotta save some money to buy some bitcoin. <laughs> for those who don't know, I, I was actually contracted by Binance for a short period when I was 18 
uh, to make educational videos on crypto related subjects and uh, Binance is a broker for cryptocurrencies for those who don't know anything about the, about the subject so I'm a big Bitcoin and gold kind of guy anyway back to the game as mentioned this map has four tracks and I never really played this map a lot so I didn't really think about the fact that the leftmost track is much shorter than the rest and the one next to it the one with the rightmost exit is in close second I realized this pretty late into the game so I needed to rethink my defense a bit mid game and I decided to ultra boost all the leftmost towers first after the VTSG of course because it was getting pretty close to losing in the mid game. So some of the placements is to focus not only on being able to get the most overall track coverage but also to focus on the leftmost track. I also targeted things like the doomship's carpet bomb on that track. I recently made a short video showcasing that you can hide tech bots inside temples to save space. Unfortunately I forgot about that trick in this run though. It would have been pretty nice, but I'll remember for next time. Something that was really nice about this game was that the most recent update made the call to arms ability global. Without that, a lot of the towers would not be able to get that buff because of all the spread out places you can place towers on this map. And also, the doomship being able to get the carrier flagship buff is also pretty great for this challenge. We actually did manage to get every single Paragon to degree 76 in this game, which was very nice and much needed. I got some good suggestions on the last episode regarding what to do with the newly released expert map Dark Dungeons. Some wanted the map to be worked into the story as a bonus mission or as a part of the story as a mission inside the castle. Another suggestion that I got that was very liked by many of you was to play the map after the series has concluded like an epilogue to the story, where I talk about the series, what people thought about it, and the possible future series like it, etc. And I think I like that suggestion the most, so that's probably the one that I'm going with. I'm also thinking about making some videos with live commentary, as has been suggested. The only thing is that it's more chill to do it after the fact, since then you can just chill and play some balloons while watching a stream or something on the side. But making live commentary makes it a totally different kind of video, where you get more insight into what the player is thinking, and can often make it into a better video. It's definitely something that I'm gonna try in the near future. Anyway, after a couple of hours we passed round 300, and eventually lost on round 312. I did not micro any of the abilities, so we can definitely make it further. What new twist on the challenge awaits on Flooded Valley, we'll just have to wait and see. But the goal of reaching round 300 on this map was reached, and thus, this mission has been completed. Oh no! The bridges! Fall back! We'll have to find another way around. 